Tiny was born in Sabske Morovici in Gorski Court, Yugoslavia, on August 17, 1921. He lived with his father Simeon and his mother Latinka and his nine brothers and two sisters. At the age of 18, his father Simeon and Sharko's uncle Jovo traveled to the United States to work. On their return to Yugoslavia, Simeon became a wood merchant and eventually owned a sawmill and a farm. After high school, Sharko attended industry school for a short time and then he entered the army as a volunteer. He had been in the army for two months when the war started. He left Yugoslavia and went to Italy. From Italy, he went to Germany. On August 16, 1948, Sarko and his young wife, Bosanka, immigrated to Canada. Mr. Bujnitz, Tell us your experience in Canada as a new immigrant. Well, I don't know where to start, but I'll start with uh, with uh, Halifax, where we landed uh, August the 16, 1948. Then we, uh, it was, uh, uh, how to say, a surprise for me how vast the country is, uh, beautiful uh, port. Of Halifax, we went to the train and we were transported uh, all the way to Montreal to St. Paul Hostel. There we stayed uh, about uh, two weeks, and um, my wife uh, got a job in uh, in Oakville. Uh, so I got the job same way there, and we stayed in Oakville for one year at Mr. Lyman Root's place, uh, it was uh, 69 Danda Street. Uh, Mr. Uh, Root was uh, uh, Lieutenant Commander of the United States Navy, but at the same time he was uh, uh, ex-president of the Sun Life Insurance Company. It was a beautiful place and uh, uh, as I say, we had to, under the contract with the Canadian government, we had to stay for one year. Um, when the contract was over, we went on tobacco farm. Uh, both of us, uh, through, through a friend, we found a farm where we worked in Langton, near Cortland, for a Belgian family. We stayed there for a month, or maybe 40 days, from there we moved to Windsor because uh, Windsor was known as an out industry, so I thought maybe I'm going to get a job there, and which I did. I worked in a couple of factories. I worked at Gutwitzson, I worked at Ford Motor Company, and uh, most of it I worked at the McCord Corporation Radiator Company. At the same time, I was doing some spare work for different people and so on. We bought some use furniture and uh, we rented an, uh, an apartment and uh, that was uh, October already November 1949 and uh, in 1950 my son Sam was born March the 31st then uh, I lost the job with the McCord Corporation I used to work a spare time with the uh, at the Metropole Supper Club and uh, I put an addition to my house, two rooms and uh, uh, since I wasn't secure with the jobs that I had, um, there was a, a suffering company uh, called British American Coal, Coal Company owned by Mr. Kloss. So they came to see me and they asked me if I would like to work for them. So I started to work for them and I worked for them for about seven and a half years till I, I was uh, delivering uh, soft drinks, selling through the county and uh, through
University of Windsor. And uh, I saw this place was for sale. This was just a, a house converted into the, uh, an ordinary pub. And um, I couldn't do it myself because I didn't have any money. So I found two partners and we bought it in the 1959. Uh, we took it over in June the 7th. So uh, this next June will be 33 years that I'm here. So the, this was already Duffy's Tavern at that well, time? It, it was Duffy's Tavern, see, it was, uh, the place was uh, sold for taxes, back taxes, for uh, $1,250. And uh, who bought the place was Mr. Alec Duff. And uh, it was uh, very known, the radio show, Duffy Stavern. So he, to his name, he added Y, apostrophe S, and made it Duffy Stavern. So everybody says, uh, instead to go to Duff's, let's go to Duffy's. That's what it was. The place had 57 chairs when we bought it, and uh, it was a, a, a good potential. And uh, whatever I was thinking about, uh, I think I realized that maybe I'm not finished yet, but. Uh, <clears throat> Tell us uh, about the expansion you made. Well, uh, first expansion we made in 1961. Uh, according to liquor control board law, you couldn't uh, uh, enlarge uh, your beverage room, but you could enlarge the dining room. And the dining room at that time had maybe 20 people. So we enlarged this one to in two phases. Uh, first one was uh, up to about 130 chairs. That was 1961. In 1963, <clears throat> um, we changed the beverage room. According to the law, again, we could go ahead. And in 1970, I did uh, my anchor room, and uh, my kitchen was uh, enlarged, and uh, I built a marine room in, on the lower floor. So today we have, uh, have 400 chairs capacity. In 1970, I, uh, or 1968, I acquired a the property across uh, Gore Street, which was uh, uh, an antique house called Park House. And uh, the people that were old, Mr. Lalonde and Mrs. Lalonde, and uh, I approached them through a friend of mine, Mr. Lester Hamilton, and uh, I bought their property. So uh, first thing that I had to do to save that house, which was very historic, it was floated on Detroit River in 1795, I guess. And it was assembled by, by uh, Roman numbers, you know, five, six, and so on. So uh, nobody was interested, and I had to uh, go ahead and build the motel. That's what I wanted to do. and. Uh, uh, Mr. Stan McMoney, that was my accountant, was member of the. I was member of the Lions Club, and he was member of the Rotary Club, and they didn't have a project. So I asked him. I said, "Why don't you take that as a project?" Which they accepted, and uh, they moved the house and uh, they restored it, which is a park now, uh, just about three blocks down. So I, uh, when the house was moved, I build a um, 17 units motel, as much land as I had. And uh, when the motel was paid, uh, I bought another piece of property next to it, which is called Gordon House. At that time, it wasn't known as a historic or anything, but then all at once it became a historic. And I'm still in litigation for, with the, town of Rambesburg about that property. Uh, it's a, it's a really a funny thing. Eh? They wanted the property and they didn't know what, what for they want the property. So I told them, take the house and leave me the property and go. They said no. So they expropriated me for six years. 
And then about four years ago, we made a deal that uh, uh, they'll move the house. Uh, and uh, so I could uh, put an addition, which I did. I put an addition of 18 units, so I have 35 units motel now. <clears throat> and uh, they moved the house, they didn't do nothing with it. it uh, it's there for the last four years and uh, rots. So I don't know what, uh, you know, it's unbelievable. They voted uh, twice, the wrong way to be right. So. How do you operate the dock? The dock, uh, we operate uh, on the basis uh, first comes, first served. Uh, there's uh, overnight docking, but uh, uh, we operate dock as a, as a uh, parking lot. Mm -hmm. Just when you come in, you come in the tavern, you dock your boat and uh, come in. And uh, even if they go uptown, I, I don't care. But uh, the, the purpose of the dock is to accommodate the customers from the United States or whoever is on uh, traveling by boat that uh, could come and uh, be served uh, in our tavern by. <clears throat> what was your biggest frustration in your business life? Oh, there's, uh, you know, uh, first of all, I, I was a foreign man into, into this country, which didn't bother me. Uh, my wife and I, we were working hard, and I was uh, sure of ourselves. But then you come into difficulty with, the, you know, like uh, right now, this is our third recession in here. And uh, when you think that you put all your life into it, and then you think that because of uh, maybe a few thousand dollars that you haven't got uh, uh, as a float or as a, as a cash, you can lose everything. That's what uh, uh, sometimes I was, you know, but otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise uh, it was, everything was working fine. We were taking care of our kids first. We didn't, we give them much love, but it, we didn't give them too much company because we were tied up in here. But wherever they wanted to go, they did. So uh, through the public school and through high school, and then after the old, all of them, they went to Western in, uh, in London, and uh, I'm really proud of that. But uh, I would say that the, the biggest disappointment that I had is uh, with the town when they didn't, uh, didn't let me do what I wanted to do. And it wasn't only for me, it was for town. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, that uh, many people don't know where Amersburg is but they know where Duffy Stavrin is. That's true. So. Do you believe you are a great achiever and your hard work paid off? Uh, I believe that, uh, you, you know, if, if it is uh, a gambling, I was very, very curious, uh, 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 how to say, cautious. Uh, but the hard work always pays, always pays. You are determined to do something, and uh, uh, you have your goal. And of course, I always had uh, support of my wife, which uh, without her I couldn't do this. And um, uh, you know, she encouraged me many, many times. And uh, you know, just with the uh, with the simple example, uh, opens up your eyes, and uh, you just go ahead and you know. Uh, we didn't want to to be, uh, how to say, millionaires. Uh, we just wanted to be simple people to achieve what we want and uh, to be happy what we what we did. Is your family still involved in the business? My two daughters, uh, Grace and Regal, they are both involved in the, in the business. My son is very very interested in business, even if he practiced the law in Windsor. Uh, if I say today. Uh, come on in, he would be here. Um, uh, that's why we are, you know, I'm in, uh, how to say, I'm in pension for the last six, seven years, and I still am in just because of my kids. And, uh, and I don't know what I would do if I'm not here. I feel 
still uh, young enough and energetic enough. Uh, I feel uh, uh, that I have some vigor to continue to be here till this is my life. What are your hobbies and pastime? Uh, well, my and hobbies, I, I'll tell you, I uh, um, belong to the Lions Club. And I, after the, uh, the, the dinner, we placed a little bit of cards. Uh, I didn't have hobby because I was uh, always too busy. But uh, this is my third year. I have, uh, uh, I golf and I love it. First of all, I exercise. Uh, uh, how to say, I enjoy myself. I have few friends that uh, even today, a friend called me up, are we gonna go out and golf? And uh, this is my hobby right now. I used to uh, uh, go out for uh, different uh, festivities of the Serbian community. I was a uh, vice president of the Free Serbian Church in uh, for last uh, oh, six years. I was involved in the diocesan board for 22 years. Uh, I was president of Chamber of Commerce in this town. I was twice president of the Lions Club in this town. I was for 17 years president of uh, Essex County Hotel and Motel Association which I, uh, I let go for the last 10 years, and uh, last year they elected me again, even if I didn't want to. Um, so if you, uh, if you call it hobby, these are my hobbies. I'm still a member of the Chamber of Commerce Board, a member of BIA uh, 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 in this town. So you have to be involved, and especially if you have uh, lot at stake that I, uh, like I do so now tell us about your family how did you meet your wife and oh well I used to go to to school in Sushak to high school and uh, this is the my wife uh, was under the Italian uh, um, even if she's a, a Serbian girl they used to live in uh, in Italy after the 1918, you know, when General Diaz took part of Fiume and, and uh, part of Istria. So uh, during the, uh, on Sundays and so I used to go out, uh, and we met on the beach there. She was uh, she had a like a perfumery store, a perfume and uh, different. Uh, 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 things for for the beach, eh? So I, we met there, and uh, that was prior to war. Then after the war, when I uh, when I left uh, my town because of the situation in Croatia, like uh, so, I was uh, under the uh, uh, some other rule than than Croat rule uh, before I joined the. Uh, what's the name? Resistance. And uh, I met my, I just phoned her up or uh, sent her a letter. I met her again and uh, we continued to, to be together. And then we got married in uh, December the 3rd, 1944. And uh, uh, when I had to leave, she was left, uh, she was behind with uh, her mother and sister. And uh, when I uh, came to Italy in uh, Savignanos Rubicone, I found a man that was uh, driving the truck all the way down to Yugoslavia. And uh, I asked him if he would deliver this letter. Uh, I paid him and, uh, and he did. So she knew where I was and the first thing that uh, she could, uh, she, she left and uh, joined me sometimes in July in 1945 and ever since then I was working for Imperial War Graves Commission, I was working at, uh, for Allied Forces in Italy and uh, till uh, the time came that we had to leave, leave Italy and uh, 
I had found a couple of friends, Canadian friends, and Mr. Uh, Carmen and Mrs. Monock, and uh, uh, I told them that I would like to go to to Canada, which uh, uh, they helped me too. But before, prior to that, I was accused by the uh, Tito's government that I was a, a war criminal. I used to command a, a group of soldiers and so on, but uh, anybody that was against the communism was a war criminal. So I was arrested by Forces Security Service in Italy and put in uh, Regina Elena war criminal wing jail. And uh, uh, it was Mayor Criso that uh, used to be attaché for the press in Zagreb, spoke Serbian, same as I do. And uh, after the interrogation for, I don't know, three weeks, he just decided that uh, there was nothing true what uh, they accused me of, and, uh, and they let me uh, go. And uh, I went, after that, I went to, uh, to a hospital to have my tonsils out because I was in jail, always in cement, in the humid. And then, uh, as I say, Mr. and Mrs. Menach, uh, it was, um, see, it was, um, when I just uh, remember all this, um, since Tito's government, or Yugoslav government, has an, uh, an agreement with the Italian government that any one that they point out that they want, um, they had to uh, extradite me to, to them. So when the time came that we, we got visa in Rome, and we were supposed to leave the uh, port of uh, Genoa with the tra this transport of, uh, with the refugees. And uh, Mr. Mansfield, that was the uh, camp commander there, he says, you can't go there because you're on the list that uh, you, you're going to be extradicted to. So he says, I'm going to help you out the, the other way. So the transport with the refugees came from Germany and uh, unloaded the, uh, these uh, refugees that uh, took the uh, ship from Genoa to states in Canada, and he put us on the, uh, that empty train back to Germany. So in Germany, we had a problem. Uh, there was a, a commander of the train, uh, an American colonel, and uh, uh, I told him that we are followers of General Mihailovic, that we are uh, fighters against that there was five of us. There were my wife and, uh, and another Zarko Vucini, same as I am, he's in Arizona now, Mile Popovic in, uh, in uh, Hamilton now, and Vinko Kuk, a Slovenian guy that uh, uh, was editor of the Slovenian paper in Toronto. Maybe it is now I lost the, the, the touch with him. And when we came to Germany, uh, the lady that was a uh, camp commander, she was um, a Lithuanian. She said, we have, you cause an international problem. You, you know, I'm an international employee, and uh, what are we going to do with, with, with you? I said, whose zone is this? She said, American zone. I said, put us in jail there. You're going to go in there. So she said, I'm going to ask the, uh, Genoa I mean, Rome, about, so that was Saturday, she gave us her time, and uh, on Monday she came, and she said, Mr. Vyusnik, I have very good news for you, I have all information, and, uh, you know, so she put me, like, to work so we could get better food, and, uh, and in about uh, 10 days, first ship that came, uh, U.S. Marine Swallow, uh, we went to Bremenhaven, and, uh, came to, to Halifax, and that's the uh, tied up now <laughs> from the beginning. So now you have three children? I have three children. I have a son, Sam, that is uh, 41, and my twin daughters, Regal and Grace. Um, they are 40 years old, and uh, Grace was born in the kitchen, and uh, Regal was born in ambulance. So since we went to Grace Hospital, 
I named her Grace, and Regal was born in Ireland, named Regal. That's oh, how it is. That's yeah, they. Uh, I have six grandchildren. My son has two beautiful girls. One is uh, six. The other one is not even two. And uh, my daughter Grace, that is married to a Serbian fellow from. Uh, by the way, Sammy's wife is a, a Lebanese uh, girl, very nice. And uh, uh, Regal, uh, Grace Mary, a uh, Serbian fellow from Chicago, but he was his father and I, we were together in the war. And he operates now in Michael Age of Windsor. And uh, Regal's, uh, 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 they have two children, Nikki and uh, Adriana. Nikki is 14, Adriana is 11. And uh, Regal has two boys, or her husband is uh, Serbian too. He operates uh, uh, dental porcelain in, uh, at 700 Tecumseh in Windsor. And uh, they have two boys, Sasha and uh, Dayan. Sasha is 12, Dayan is uh, 10. And uh, we are all happy the way we are. Everybody goes along very good. And both uh, my daughters are with me here in the business, and uh, that's my wife and I. We are every day here. We change the shift too, so that uh, every day or every hour, somebody is here from our family. <clears throat> that's the only way to operate this business. So, as I say, the kids are uh, all educated, which I am proud of, and. Uh, Never had no trouble with, uh, with, uh, with them. And uh, many, many times they remind me now of what I told them, that uh, they have to tell their, their kids. And Thank you very much. You're quite welcome. God bless Thank you. you. Thank you very much.